Welcome to Netbook Study. This is the daily current affairs analysis of 19th March 2024. In this video, we are going to discuss the important news articles from Hindu as well as Indian Express. Along with that, previous year's questions are also going to be discussed. Let's get into the discussion of this. The first news article is regarding precedent and let's see what exactly it has been mentioned in this news article. Uh, let me give you the gist of uh, what exactly the tussle going on between uh, Kerala government and the central government here. See, Kerala government, it has passed some of the bills. Usually what happens whenever the uh, bill has been passed, you, they, it goes to the governor. Governor either he can give us, he can say yes to it, give us assent, he can withhold the assent or he can reserve the bills to the president. So here in this article, so many uh, names of the bills have been mentioned here. You don't have to remember all these uh, bills names. What happened is governor has reserved. So this bill went to the president and uh, president has president said no to most of these bills she did not give her assent to it and kerala government is not happy with that so kerala government has decided to approach to the supreme court to, uh, to go for a judicial review of president of india the decisions taken by president of india see this is something new in our country uh, we have this is the first time a state government is going against the president state government want judicial review of decision taken by president of india see what state government is telling is this goes against the ethos of federal structure of our country see we are uh, legally elected from the people we are the people representative we have that authority to make uh, laws in our state but what is happening both the governor as well as the president they are acting against the interest of people of kerala because we have that mandate so we are passing the bill so it will it will be a moral and ethical responsibility of president and the governor to give assent to give s yes, uh, uh, to these bills but what they are doing they are working against the interest of people they are working as an agents of uh, central government so these are this is the altercation going on between central authorities as well as the state government here and now it has re reached the supreme court so this is the news this is what it has been mentioned here so what i'll do is along with this information i'll give you the background information regarding president i think this is the first time we are going to have the discussion with respect to president let me give you the gist of the president from the perspective of polity so that it is going to help in uh, prelims as well as the mains examination so let's talk about the president president is considered as the head of the state and is also considered as the first citizen of india and president is a part of executive if you look at the executive prime minister is a, a part of executive council of minister and then attorney general and along with that even vice president also a part of uh, executive now president he also become the part of executive and let's see the electoral college which is responsible for president elections uh, first is members of uh, Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha it is not the nominated members these are the elected members and then comes legislative assemblies of the state see only the legislative assemblies not the legislative councils and then legislative assemblies of union territories of Delhi and Puducherry so these are the electors of president of electors for the pre presidential election in our country and uh, if you look at the tenure it is five years once the president is elected he will be there in the office for the period of five years and the election that the principle of the president election works on the proportional representation with a single transferable vote and this election held in a secret ballot system of voting if any issue happens any issue with respect to the presidential election then that issue goes to the supreme court and whatever the decision given by supreme court that is final with respect to presidential and vice presidential elections here and uh, what is the uh, qualification to become a president of india the age factor is 35 years and whatever the qualifications that are necessary to become a member of lok sabha that everything applies to the president also and uh, another aspect is the candidate should have a 50 proposers and the 50 seconders those proposers either can be mps or mlas so if you look at it it is 100 supporters should be there 50 proposers and the 50 seconders these are the basic information and let's see the powers and functions of uh, president here the first power is regarding executive power and let's see what are the executive power see whatever the executive action taken it should be taken in the name of president only the central government executive action should be named taken in the name of president only and president has that power to declare any area as the scheduled area and also the decision with respect to administration of the scheduled area also comes under the ambit of president here and president can seek the uh, administrative information with respect to central government and from the union government he can 
uh, seek the information and he can appoint he has that authority to appoint the interstate council and this is the constitutionally mandated council uh, it is mentioned under the article 263 and let's see uh, he has that authority to appoint a few, uh, few of the people few of the uh, of officials and let's see the list of them he he has that authority to appoint the controller and auditor general chief election commissioners and other election commissioners chairman and members of upsc and then come state governors finance commission uh, uh, chairman of finance commission as well as the members of finance commission and attorney general see the, these are the executive functions of uh, president of india and let's see the legislative powers see in the legislative power president has the power to summon president has the power to prorogue the parliament and he can dissolve the lok sabha also if there is no confidence no confidence and he can summon the joint sitting also when exactly joint sitting is going to be summoned if there is a deadlock with respect to any of the uh, bills mainly the ordinary bills in money bills you cannot go for a joint sitting so in in uh, ordinary bills if there are any issues between two houses then president can summon the joint sitting of lok sabha and rajya sabha and after every general election the first session president is going to address the indian parliament and he is going to appoint the speaker deputy speaker of, uh, in the lok sabha and chairman and deputy, deputy chairman of rajya sabha and he is going to nominate 12 members to the rajya sabha and he is going to consult election commission of india with respect to if there are any matters with with respect to disqualification of mps then he should uh, he consults election commission of india and he recommends and he permits introduction of certain ty types of bill especially money bill and certain types of financial bill he has that authority and he has that authority to promulgate ordinance also this is mentioned under article 123 so these are the legislative powers of president and let's see the financial powers also see uh, if any money bill has to be introduced then the recommendation is mandatory recommendation by president is mandatory and he causes the union budget to be laid before the parliament and he has that he has to give that permission his recommendation is necessary to uh, demand for a grant also contingency fund of india works under his control and he constitute finance commission every 5 years once and let's see the judicial powers he appoints the chief justice of india and uh, just justice of supreme court and other uh, uh, judges and he take advices from supreme court especially with respect to any pre constitutional treaties and all any international uh, these kind of aspects uh, but these advices are not binding on him and he has the pardoning power also the pardoning commute the uh, reprieve all these pardoning powers he has got it so these are the judicial powers and then comes diplomatic powers see any of these international treaties any of the international agreements that has to be approved by parliament and everything will be concluded in the name of president only so he has the diplomatic authority also and he is the he is considered as a representative of india in all the international forums and all international related affairs these are the diplomatic powers and let's see the military powers military powers he is considered as a commander of defense forces of india he has that he has that control of defense forces in our country like chief he is going to appoint chief of army chief of navy and chief of air force so these are the military powers and finally emergency powers we know that there are three emergency national emergency due to the uh, external aggression and then come president rule and finally financial emergency uh, this is mentioned under article uh, 352 and this is mentioned under article 365 and financial emergency is mentioned under article 360 for all these emergencies president rule is extremely important for the implementation as well as the revocation so these are the uh, uh, information regarding president and let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2018 with reference to the election of president of india consider the following statement two statements have been given first statement is the value of the vote of each mla varies from state to state yes this is true the value of uh, vote of mps of lok sabha is more than value of uh, mps of rajya sabha this is false let's move to the next topic the next news is regarding uh, ipcc so let's i'll give the information what exactly it has been mentioned in this news article first and then i'll give the uh, background information regarding ipcc so the in this article uh, a uh, researchers they have come together and they have analyzed the future aspects of emission especially the carbon emission and greenhouse gas emissions and they have come to a conclusion and what is that conclusion see they have analyzed from all the scenarios if you look at it at present the developed countries their emission is very high and if you look at the developing countries as well as the least developed countries their emission is comparatively lower even though developing countries their emissions are increasing but when you compare it to the developed countries 
our emissions developing countries and least developed countries emissions they are extremely low now the research has researchers scientists they have come together and they have analyzed the future scenario till 2050 they made the analysis see after 25 years how will be the emissions around the world they put various uh, uh, permutations and combinations and they come to a conclusion the conclusion is that even in two, 2050 also these developed countries like usa and the european countries their contribution to the emissions will be significant and their uh, effort towards the carbon dioxide emission and carbon sequestration yes this is going to happen but still their emission their contribution to the global warming you cannot ignore it and least developed countries and the developing countries definitely they are going to take action and whatever the action they take it is going to show results also so these researchers have told that see it is the responsibility of developed countries they have to be proactive and they should take actions they should make sure that whatever the emissions they are doing they should have that accountability factor they should have that responsibility factor and another aspect is even if you look at the economic perspective also the per capita income of sub-saharan africa south asia west asia and the rest of the asia this region and the population is also going to constitute 60 percent of the world population and their income is also extremely less compared to the western countries compared to the developed countries even in 2050 also right now yes uh, uh, our uh, per capita income is comparatively lower when you compare it to the western countries and even our emissions are also very low compared to the western countries and this is going to continue in 2050 also usually what happens in cop 28 and these kind of international platforms developed countries say that developing countries they are going to increase the emissions and they are going to cause the they are going to enhance the global warming these are the arguments given by the developed countries but this survey and this research is showing that in future the same scenario what we are uh, having now the same scenario is going to continue there also you cannot blame developing countries you cannot blame least developed countries being a developed country you have to take the responsibility and the similar uh, type of difference is going to be seen with respect to global north and global south also so this aspect what they show is it is the duty of developed countries they should proactively take action with respect to climate change aspect you know when it comes to the financial contribution they are not doing it when it comes to the technology transfer they are not doing it they are telling that they are putting all their uh, all the burden onto the developing countries especially like countries on uh, countries like india brazil telling that these are the countries contributing to the global warming but research shows that this is not true even in 2050 this is not going to be true at that point of time also so you cannot put the burden on these kind these countries developed and least developed countries it is your responsibility go for car carbon capture and storage technologies and help the developing countries to develop these kind of technologies also and this is what it has been mentioned by uh, mentioned by these researchers and this research activity is backed by ipcc so let me give you guys information regarding ipcc also ipcc stands for intergovernmental panel on climate change and what exactly it is see it is a international body and this is a un designated body also it has that uh, acceptance factor from the un this was set up in 1998 and this was jointly set, set up by world meteorological organization and united nation environment program these two bodies have come together to uh, formulate a new body that is ipcc what exactly they do see uh, it has a group of scientists and these scientists they come together and they analyze the various aspect of climate change now uh, where exactly we are standing and what are the uh, situ what will be the situation in future and how can we adopt to this situation and what will be the mitig mitigation factor all these aspect is going to be discussed see if but one thing you need to remember here is see they do all this analysis and they release their report but the thing is they are they don't have that uh, provision or they they are not directly involved in research activities usually what happens the bodies like unep the bodies like w world meteorological organization these kind of international organization uh, united nations various bodies they release the reports and these you ipcc uh, body ipcc collect these reports and it goes through with that report and it finally prepare three reports it means that it there is already report is there it, this is going to collect these reports and this is going to analyze the data and this is going to research on this data and finally it gives the conclusion of all these reports with respect to climate change uh, so ipcc is directly not involved in 
scientific research this is the thing and it mainly has three working groups and all the three working groups they release three reports here the first working groups it focuses on physics of climate change and the second working group it focuses on impacts of climate change and the adaptation of uh, climate change and the third working group it focuses on a mitigation factor and how what are the steps we need to take to handle the climate change these are the three working groups so they release the separate data with respect to these aspects see all these data is going to be compiled and another one more report is going to be released and this has the comp this is considered as a comprehensive data of ipcc till now there are six uh, reports have been released six assessment cycles have been conducted and six assessment reports have been released and very recently sixth report has also been uh, released and this sixth report uh, one aspect that is mentioned in the sixth report is to control the temperature rise of temperature to 1.5 degree celsius compared to the pre-industrial era pre-industrial era whatever the temperature was there and now the rise in temperature should be restricted to 1.5 degree celsius of that particular time so this is the uh, suggestion given by sixth uh, assessment report and this aspect has been discussed and implemented in paris agreement also and another important aspect is global stock take this is also mentioned under sixth assessment report and what is that global stock take so it has mentioned that every five years once all these countries they come together they have to analyze uh, what are usually you we put a target for next five years and we come together and we analyze whether we have reached the target or not this kind of global stock take this gives that push factor this gives that accountability factor this india is telling that we are going to reduce 40 percent of carbon emissions and they tell in the international forum are we doing it are we following it are we achieving this target that has to be discussed once in a while and that once in a while is five years once and that con entire concept is called as global stock take this idea is also mentioned in uh, assessment report of sixth assessment report and right now we are ipcc is currently having the seventh assessment cycle let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2023 the intergovernmental panel panel on climate change has uh, predicted a global sea level rise of about one meter by uh, 2100 what would be its impacts in india and other countries in the indian ocean region let's move to the next news next news is again the repeated news it's uh, with respect to election commission and here it has been mentioned how are the new election commissioners selected and it's about the new law that the appointment of election commissioners and other election commission we have we have had a discussion with, uh, with uh, this particular so many times what i'll do is i'll just give the revision of uh, entire aspect content of the news is the president has appointed uh, two new election commissioners very recent a few days ago gyanesh kumar and sukhbir singh sandhu and they have been appointed uh, under the new law which was passed in a, a recent uh, winter session and the name of the new law is uh, chief election commissioners and other election commissioners appointment conditions of service and terms of office act of 2023 see article 324 it gives that authority to e election commission of india to conduct free and fair election in our country see free and fair election this is the democratic uh, the basement and th this is what our uh, democracy th thrives on and to uphold this free and fair election uh, constitution has gave, given that provision given that authority to election commission of india but the thing is in that constitution it has not been mentioned that how many election commissioners should be there see it has just been mentioned there should be a chief election commissioners and if he want if president want more election commissioners for the workload then he can from time to time he can fix the number of other election commission there will be one chief election commissioner and the authority has given to the president he can with respect to as of now there are two uh, other election commissioners in future it may be five also so president has that authority to increase or decrease the number of other election commissioners but initially since the implementation of uh, constitution till 40 years we had only chief one chief election commissioners but in 1989 this has this was increased to three at that 1989 what exactly happened the 61st amendment under the 61st amendment the voting age was reduced from 21 to 18 years at that part of at that point of time uh, in order to handle the work pressure two more election commissioners were added into the election commission of india but even this was only for very short time and uh, by 1990 january it, it was removed but later on after two years again uh, 
it uh, the same idea of one chief election commissioners and two election commissioner has been continued it is continued even till now so this is what the content of the news article is but let me give you guys information regarding uh, chief election commissioners and other election commissioner act of 2013 all you have to focus here is one aspect that is the selection committee in that selection committee we have a prime minister and we have a leader of opposition and there is one cabinet minister nominated by prime minister initially what happened uh, supreme court has told that you need to form a selection committee with respect to the appointment of election commissioner so as long as parliament does not make a law there will be in the selection committee there will be prime minister there will be uh, leader of opposition there will be chief justice of india but uh, government passed this bill of uh, cec and other bills and it has removed chief justice of india and in that place of chief, uh, chief justice of india one cabinet minister has got the place it means that the central government has got the majority they have that whims and wishes when it comes to the appointment of election commission and this is with respect to this particular act since we have had a discussion with respect to this uh, article so many times i'm just giving you the light glance with respect to this particular topic now let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2017 three statements have been given and you need to find the right statement the election commission of india is a five member body no it's a three member body union ministry of home affairs decide the election schedule for conduction of uh, elections no this is not the union ministry this is election commission of india and the third statement is election commission resolves the dispute relating to splits and mergers yes this is true so only three is the right option uh, let's move to the next news the next news is regarding a chemical and uh, chemical name is rhodamine b news article talks about why karnataka government has banned food coloring used in a cotton candy and few days ago tamil nadu government also taken a decision karnataka government also taken a decision along with that even karnataka government has told that gobi manchurian even that is uh, the coloring used in gobi manchurian also been banned and even goa has also taken a decision to ban the gobi manchurian the thing the thing is the uh, samples have been tested around 170 samples have been uh, tested and more than 120 samples in it they were using the coloring which had this chemical of rhodamine b rhodamine b is a very serious chemical and it has a severe health negative health effects health impacts also and here in this article it has been mentioned that see it is not intentionally people are using it the thing is they don't have that awareness especially those uh, samples which are collected from roadside stalls there we saw this rhodamine b based uh, dyes have been used there so the creating awareness is extremely important for these people you know they are getting these food coloring because it's a cheap cost and it's very easy to obtain and it is it our uh, responsibility to create awareness in these for these uh, roadside stalls not to use these kind of dyes so this is what it has been mentioned in this news article but let me give you guys information regarding rhodamine see this rhodamine b this is an industrial dye and this is extremely chemical one and it it, it is considered as a harmful coloring agent and not only in gobi manchurian even for the uh, uh, cotton candies which are sold in front of the schools they are also rhodamine bees uh, uh, it, it the traces have been found that see if somebody is exposed in a regular manner this is going to create a lot of trouble to the human body then see this is a textile dye it is used for the in the textile sector and we are consuming it and this is going to seriously impact our health the important aspect here is this is going to cause the uh, death of us uh, brain cells actually stem cells brain cells it is going to damage the cerebellum tissue so if it is directly affecting our nervous system so proper step had to be taken make sure that this should not uh, you know we should not be exposed to it on a regular ba basis and there are recent surveys which mention that there is a probability of a kidney damage also it is going to affect liver in a negative way this is going to increase the risk of uh, stomach tumor also see on the whole it's not a food color this is a industrial dye and it should not be used in a food industry but without awareness or unknowingly uh, whatever it is maybe a price factor it is extremely easy to get hands on it and this coloring agent is used for the food items and this is the worrying part and uh, it is time that all the state government they should make sure that these kind of chemical should not enter the human body and even there should awareness should be created at the social level also people also should be aware of this so this is what it has been mentioned in this news article let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2013 which of the following can be found as pollutants in the drinking water in some parts of india arsenic sorbitol fluoride formaldehyde uranium uh, here 
sorbitol is not considered as a pollutant and formaldehyde is not considered as a pollutant in drinking water so 135 is the right option here arsenic fluoride and uranium this is it for the day guys this pdf is available in netbook study i'll see you guys tomorrow